Hi friends, Juan the Yarn Addict here with another tutorial. This particular tutorial is the C to C, uh, which basically means corner to corner. And I am going to show you the basics on how to create a project going from one side to the other in the diagonal. So if that is of interest to you, feel free to stick around. If you enjoy this content, feel free to give me a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all things one and the yarn addicts related. I am definitely happy to be showing you this, lots of requests, and so yeah, let's get started. Hi friends, for this tutorial, I'm gonna be using these three skeins of yarn from Premier Just Yarn. These are the smaller skeins uh, obtained from Dollar Tree. And uh, this particular colorway is Leaf, and it is a medium four weight yarn. It does call for a 5.5 millimeter hook, USI9. It is 153 yards, 2.46 ounces, or 70 grams, and it is 100% acrylic. So again, I'm gonna be using Leaf. I'm gonna be using Purple. And uh, this skein here is called Mist. So let's get started. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm actually gonna be using a six millimeter hook, otherwise known as USJ from Prim. And you wanna start out by creating your slip knot just like that. And then you want to chain six. Two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. So what I'd like to, I guess, put out in the world is when you're doing a C to C blanket and you're just starting out. So you have to remember all of your groupings of stitches need a handle. So I think of it as like a pitcher of juice. So these three chains here closest to your hook will be your handle and you're gonna create your picture by planting in three double crochets in the remaining three of the six that you just created. So when all said and done, this is what you'd like to see. Three double crochets and then three chains. After that, what you wanna do is chain six. One, two, three, four, five and six okay and then you want to turn your work okay so to start row two you have to create your picture so your picture of juice so three of the six uh, chains that you've created will be the, the handle to your picture and then the remaining three one two and three will be where you plant your double crochets so one, two, and three. Okay, we just pull some yarn here. Okay, so that's how this should look. You, these chains here should always be to the side closest to your needle. If you're left-handed, then your chains should always be to the left. If you're right-handed, your chains should always be to the right. In either case, once you've completed your three double crochets, there's nowhere else for you to go, right? So now what you need to do is find the handle to the pitcher of the last row here. And what you wanna do is you wanna go in and do a slip stitch like that, and you wanna chain three. And this here is the handle to your pitcher. And in your chain three space here, from the very first set of stitches that you've created, you want to put in three more double crochets. One, two, and three. Okay, let me pull some yarn out of the skein here. Okay, and so this is kind of what it should look like. Now, everything will fall into place as you go. So don't worry if it doesn't look perfect. It will fit itself into place as you go. So this is the corner of the blanket, and we're working like this diagonally. So now that we're at the end of row two, what we need to do is chain six. So that's going to be the constant. At the end of every row, you chain six. So one, two, three, four 
Oops. Five and six. I'm slipping out of there. And then we want to turn our work. Okay, so you have six chains here. Um, don't mind the back bumps. You, what you want to pay attention to are the bumps along the top here. And so what you want to do is you want to go into the fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four. In that chain, you want to put in a double crochet. And you should have two remaining chains here. You want to put a double crochet in each one of those chains. It's two and three. Yep. Let's make sure we get that right here. Okay, so that's what it should look like. Okay. Need some more yarn here. Okay. So after you've completed your three double crochets, you need to slip stitch into the handle from the previous row. That's also going to be a constant. In order for you to climb the stairs, so to speak, to go back and forth, you're going to have to slip stitch as you go. So after every slip stitch, you want to chain three. And then you want to plant three double crochets in the chain space. One, two, three just like that and then we're going to climb the stairs look for your chain space and you want to do a slip stitch and after every slip stitch you chain three and then after your chain three you want to plant three double crochets in your chain space one two and three okay so Let's just take a look at it's, uh, where we're at now. So here we are, the end of row three. So now what we need to do, we're at the end of the row, we chain six. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then let's turn our work and we're gonna plant a double crochet, fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four, we need to go into that chain and put in a double crochet. And then you have two chains remaining. You want to put a double crochet in each of those chains. Okay, and so it should look like that. And now what we need to do is we need to walk up the stairs here. So as we walk up the stairs, we slip stitch. Okay, that's the first part. Then after every slip stitch, we chain three. And after every chain three, we plant three double crochets in the chain space. One, two, excuse me, and three. Okay, now we're gonna continue walking up the stairs. We're going to slip stitch into the chain space. Okay, so to get to that chain space, we need to slip stitch, and then we chain three. And then after every chain three, we're going to plant in three double crochets in the chain space. One, two, and three. Okay, so we're nearing the end of row four. One, two, three, four, right? So now we need to slip stitch and chain three. One, two, and three. Okay, so now after every chain three, we need to plant three double crochets in the chain space. One, two, and three. Okay, so that's what this looks like after four rows. And if you notice, see, as you work your product, as you work your project, your squares will actually balance itself out. It looks kind of wonky here. But that's okay because as you turn your work and you work through these chain spaces, it actually rebalances the square. So fear not, everything will work itself out. Let me pull some more yarn out here. Okay. So at the end of every row, we need to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we turn our work 
and we need to go into the fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four. Okay, double crochet and go right into that chain space, the top loop there. Okay, and there should be two more chains left. See, this was remaining from here. So we just need to focus on this one and this one right here. So double crochet in that chain and a double crochet in this next chain right here. And it should look like that. These are your three chain spaces. These are your three double crochets, okay? So now what we need to do is just walk up the stairs. I'm gonna do one with you and then I'm gonna meet you at the end of the row, okay? So we're going to slip stitch into our chain space. And then the next step would be to chain three. And then the next step would be to put three double crochets into the chain space. Okay, one, two, and three. Okay, so you guys continue to do that. I will meet you all the way up here, okay? Okay guys, so we are now nearing the end of the row. And as previously discussed, in order for us to climb the stairs, we do a slip stitch and then we chain three. And after the third chain there, we plant three double crochets in the chain space as previously discussed. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to change colors. It's like every other project out there when you change colors at the end of the row, this is no different. What you wanna do is grab the color that you're gonna work with next. In our case, it's gonna be this wonderful purple color. And let me see here. <laughs> okay. So what you wanna do now is I pull out the last double crochet and then I go back in and I only do the double crochet halfway with only two loops remaining. And then I take the new color and then I complete that double crochet, just like that, okay? And then before I do anything else, what I like to do is pull on the old color and pull on the new color to just tighten everything up. And then to lock that in, I just do a chain just to hold it into place and then I flip it. And then I take my Christmas scissors and I trim the old color and then I just knot it right here. Some people don't do anything with it. They sew it in later. I like to knot my work as I go, just like that, nice and tight. And I don't count that chain that I just did as anything. Um, some people do, some people don't. I don't because I like my knots real tight. So it's almost as if there's no chain there. So I just pretend as if there wasn't one there. And so now I chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and now we turn our work. And as per the former rows, we go into the fourth chain from the hook. So when we look at this from above here, let's see. One, two, three, and four. So we're gonna go into that one right there. Double crochet. And you should have two more chains left in your row here. This one and this one. So you're, we're gonna plant two double crochets, one in each. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So now, as discussed before, in order to climb the stairs, we need to do what? We need to slip stitch and then chain three and then plant three double crochets in the chain space. It's two and that's three. Okay, so continue doing that and I will meet you at the end of the row, which is up here, okay? Okay, so I'm nearing the end here at the very top, and I'm putting in my three double crochets. Okay, so in order to grow your project in either direction, you need to always chain six. 
the chain six will help your blanket grow um, because you're using three of them as a, a handle and then you're using three of them to build your stitch. So that was my chain six here. I'm gonna turn my work and then I'm gonna go into the fourth chain from the hook. Sometimes what I like to do is count backwards. Sometimes it's a lot easier. So here is your cluster of double crochets here. I just count backwards, one, two, and three, and then I just plant my double crochet there. And then I just go forward from there. It's a lot faster um, for me anyway. Okay, and then you just build your staircase accordingly. So slip stitch, chain three, and then we're just gonna go ahead and plant three double crochets in the chain space, like so, like that. And then we're just gonna continue doing that. This is actually pretty easy. Once you have your first few rows built, it's literally mindless. You can just go to town as long as you know the routine, you're building your square, and the only thing that you really should concern yourself with is how you're going to build your colorway. Are you going to do the blanket the entire color? Is it going to even be a blanket? Is it going to be something else? Um, so those are questions I think about as I'm building this. Um, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to do a perfect square. Okay. All right. And so... Finishing the row here. One, two, and three. Okay. So that's what this looks like so far. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the color, but then what we're going to do is we're going to go the other way. We're going to, I have a hair here, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so we're going to build our square back down this way. And so I'm gonna take my Christmas scissors and cut like so like that. And then I'm gonna grab this color here called mist. And we're going to pull the double crochet back out and then only go back into it, but halfway. Only go through two. So you only have two remaining. And then take your new color, go in, and then just tighten everything up. Make sure you have a decent tail too. And then just close everything up like that, and then do a chain to lock it in. Just get real tight with everything, flip it, and then just knot it up however you see fit, because it's your project. Do it as you like. Okay. And so now let's do one more build row. So let's go ahead and chain six, three, four, five, six, turn our work and go into the third chain from your project here. One, two, and three. And then let's go ahead and slip stitch and then chain three, and then let's just go to town. Let's go up the stairs. One, two, and three. I'm gonna continue going up the stairs here. I'm gonna meet you when we get to here, okay? Okay, so I'm at the end of the row, and I'm just planning in my three double crochets, okay? So now, this is going to be the corner, the other corner of, of the work, okay? So 
essentially, we are going to build out and down from here. So in order to do that, we no longer chain six because remember, chain six will grow the work. So now what we need to do is I chain one and I turn the work. And then now what I do is I slip stitch across the three double crochets that I just finished. So I go in and just slip stitch like so like that. Two and three. Okay, so now we officially have our corner. This is our corner now, all right? And so now what we need to do is chain three. One, two, and three. So the project will literally go in this direction now and, and no more growth. So now what we do is after we chain three, we go back into the chain space and plant three double crochets. One, two, and three. Okay, and then we're going to go up the stairs, one, two, three, one, two, and three. Okay, just don't forget to do your slip stitch as you climb the stairs, slip stitch and chain three. And then you want to do three double crochets. That part of it doesn't change at all. So I'm going to continue up the stairs. I'll meet you when we get here. Okay. Okay, guys. So I've approached the end of the row where we're no longer increasing. We're actually decreasing now. So if you recall down here, we, we stopped growing, right? So we did slip stitches and then we went up the stairs and here we are at the end of the stairs here. So in order to continue this process, where we're no longer building, right? What we need to do is we'll go into the chain space and do a slip stitch. Chain one to lock it in and then turn our work. And then now what we need to do is slip stitch into these three double crochets, one, two, and three. So we're gonna insert our hook into the first one and just do a slip, insert, do a slip, insert, do a slip. Okay, and there you have it. Okay, so I didn't give specific row numbers because your square, your C to C will really depend on how big you want it. So my recommendation to you would be to continue growing out your square until you feel that your width is wide enough. And obviously it's going to be a square, right? So if it's going to be wide enough for you, then obviously the length will have to do just as well. Um, I will have another tutorial out in the future for like rectangles, or I can actually better yet um, direct you to tutorials that actually do the rectangles. Um, but in this particular instance, what we're going to do is focus on the square itself. And so what we're going to do is we're going to continue going back and forth until we've completed our square here. So as in other rows, what we need to do is chain three because we're going to go back across the staircase here. So let me just get myself organized here. Okay, so chain three in the workspace, in the chain space, I'm sorry. So we're going to chain three in the chain space, just like that. Then we're going to slip stitch, chain three, and then three double crochets, like so, like that. Okay, and then we're going to go across the staircase here, and I will meet you when we get here, okay? Okay, guys, so here I am at the top of this row here. So what we need to do is we need to slip stitch in the chain space, chain one to lock it in, and turn the work, okay? So that's how this should look, okay? Now what we need to do is chain three across here. One two, and three. And now what I'd like to do is show you how I change the color going down on, on a decrease, okay? So you change the color after you've done your three slip stitches. Give yourself some room here. I take my magical Christmas scissors, cut like so, like that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to purple. 
And because we're not in the middle of a double crochet, I literally just take it like that, give myself a tail, I pull nice and tight on all the things, and I turn my work like this, and I tie my tails. I get everything nice and tight. And that chain that I used to, to do this, I don't count that as part of anything. If you can, there's, there's no real estate used here. I mean, it's virtually non-existent. So now what we need to do is chain three. And after that, we go into our chain space and then we, we crawl across the stairs here. So let's go here and plant three double crochets in the chain space. Okay, and then let's do a slip stitch in this chain space here. And this is pretty much familiar territory, guys. So you're just gonna go ahead and give the stairs the three double crochets in each stair that it needs. Just make sure that you slip and you do three chains as you work yourself across the staircase here. And I will meet you at the end of the row here, okay? Okay, I've approached the end of the row. We need to slip stitch into the chain space, chain one to lock it in, turn our work, and do three slip stitches across the three double crochets that you just did. It should look like that. And then we chain three. And we're just going to repeat ourselves across the staircase here. So three double crochets in the chain space, like so, like that. And then slip stitch into the chain space, chain three, and then three double crochets into the chain space, okay? And I'm gonna continue across here. I will meet you when we get to here. Okay, so I'm at the end of this particular row here, the decreasing row. And so, like previous, we need to slip stitch into the chain space and then chain one to lock it in. And we're gonna turn our work and do slip stitches into these three double crochets that you just did. So one, two, and three, just like that, okay? And now what I'd like to do is change my color back to this leaf color. So I'm gonna take my Christmas scissors. I'm so proud of these scissors. I don't know why, I just like them. I don't know, okay. So I'm just going to grab the new color, pull it through and then tighten everything like so, like this. Just tighten it nice and tight. Bring your needle close to the work. Let's turn it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to knot this up. Nice and tight. Just like that. All right, now, as I said before, when you change colors, um, that stitch that you did to join that color, it doesn't count as anything. You can't even see it. You want that clean break anyway. So you're gonna chain three. Just keep all of your loose ends to the side there out of the way. And then what you wanna do is in the chain space, three double crochets. I literally just said the tails need to stay out of the way. Ah, <sighs> man. Okay. One, two, and three. Okay. And then now we just slip stitch, chain three, and then three double crochets in the chain space. Okay. 
and you can tell we're almost we're almost done because we only have so many left so we're just going to go for the gambit here and continuous run the feed here okay so three there and then we're going to slip stitch chain one to lock it in turn our work <clears throat> you'll see a little gap here that goes away as you work your slip stitches see that'll go away two and three yeah that's fine just like that then chain three and then work across the stairs there's only so many left one two and three and then we're going to slip stitch into the chain space, chain three, and then three double crochets in that chain space. Okay, slip stitch, chain one to lock it in, turn our work, and then we are going to do three slip stitches, like so, like that. And then we are going to chain three. We are on the last square here. And then three double crochets, one, two, and three. Okay, so now what we need to do, slip stitch, chain one to turn uh, to lock it in and then turn our work. And then we are going to slip stitch one, two, and three. And what I like to do is I like to go into that chain space and just do another final uh, slip stitch and then take my Christmas scissors and I cut my work and I just do just like that okay so that is our C to C okay piece of cake and yeah let me just back this camera up a little bit so we can get a better view of the situation at hand here. So yeah, not bad. And again, you can go as wide as you want. Um, and again, the length and the width will match. Uh, my recommendation is, is when you are doing a C to C, have a predetermined length get some measuring tape or a piece of furniture, you know, just eyeball something and say to yourself, okay, this is how wide I want it. And then plan your colors accordingly. So, um, that's pretty much it guys. It's really simple. Um, the secret yarnery, Krista over at the secret yarnery, I know she's got some C to C tutorials, I believe more specifically like the rectangle, but what I'll tell you is, is that, um, you know, to build the rows, you just have to remember the principle of building the row and decrease. So to build the row, you're literally chaining six. And then to decrease, you're not chaining anything. You're literally doing slip stitches. Um, and I would just highly recommend, you know, scrolling back in this video if you're not sure how to do an increase or how to do a decrease. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, so, yeah. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'll be more than happy to read them and respond accordingly. Um, yeah, so this wraps this up. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you did, feel free to give me a like, a subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all things one and one yarn addict related. So until the next time, take it easy.